Hi everybody. In this video, we're going to connect Elementor Forms with HubSpot. To achieve this, we have two options to consider. Using HubSpot's integration, which requires an additional plugin and script, or using a webhook, which we'll focus on today. So let's dive in and get our forms communicating with HubSpot. So to get started, I have here an Elementor form on a sandbox environment, a blank HubSpot account here with no contacts. I'll go ahead and refresh just to confirm. So there's nothing in this CRM environment just yet. And I spun up a new scenario with Make. I personally love Make for all this type of stuff. And here what we'll do is spin up a new webhook that'll receive the information that we'll send from Elementor form. So I'll go ahead and click here, custom webhook. And let's go ahead and create a new one. You can call this whatever you want. Whatever you're gonna name it here is actually what's gonna come up here when you look at connections and webhooks and try to view this later down the road. So it's good that you give it a name that you can distinguish later. In my case, I'm going to delete this after. I'll just call it HubSpot Webhook tutorial and hit save. And now we have a new webhook, which is just a URL that's listening at all times for information. So I'll go ahead and copy this to my clipboard and hit OK. And I'll go into my Elementor form and click into it. And you'll see that by default, the actions that are taken after a submission are collecting it into our database on WordPress, which I don't want to do. It's just bloating things up and sending an email to whatever we define here on the email tab. In this case, I don't want to do that either. So I am going to delete this email tab and I will just add here the webhook that's at the bottom. And now we have a new webhook option over here, which I am going to paste my URL into and hit update. And now that we have everything saved, I can go ahead and click here on preview changes and Let's go over here and click on run once. So that way the webhook and scenario is running and listening. And in here, I am just going to type in some information. This is my junk email, so don't bother trying to send this anything. This is just a test and click on send and the form was submitted successfully. Now that's just the first step. So if we go back to make, we'll see that here, it should be receiving the information any second now. And there it is. So if I click on here, I can see that the information that was received is what I actually provided. And I also have here a form ID, which is super useful if we end up adding some conditions and having multiple forms. In this case, we're gonna keep things simple. So my next step for this scenario is to simply add a HubSpot connection. So I'll add a module here and search for HubSpot. And once you choose HubSpot, it'll require us to choose what type of action we want to take when receiving this data. So in our case, we simply just want to inject a new contact into the CRM. So we'll do create a contact. And in this case, what I'm going to do is add a new CRM connection and I'll call this tutorial so I can recognize it later, hit save. And I'm gonna exit out of my full screen mode here for a minute since it popped up another window here. And here it's simply asking me to authorize the connection. So I'll go ahead and click the environment that I just created and hit choose account. And again, HubSpot is just kind of showing me what's about to happen here. I agree to this connection and let's go ahead and proceed. And that's it. So now I have my connection in place. And my next step is to simply wire up the properties that I want to integrate with. So in this case, I have here a key, so I will go ahead and search for email. And the value that I wanna add is the email right here. So the next thing we'll do is add a new property. And in this case, we will go and search for name. And it's only providing first and last name. So in this case, we'll just pretend that our field is first name. And I'll go ahead and drag the name that I receive into here. Now we're gonna add some more logic later down the road to accommodate for either receiving a full name, only a first name, or only a last name. We'll get all that taken care of in just a sec. I just want you all to see the flow happening and then we'll customize it a little further. So I'll go ahead and click out of this for a minute. And now that we have the first name and email fields taken care of, let's pretend that the message form doesn't really exist and we're just gonna disregard it for just a second. So I'll click here, okay, and save. I want you all to see this working right away. So now that this is running, I will go back to my form here and refresh and I'll add into here 
some basic details. So let me go ahead and do that. And this is a test again and hit send. So this should technically send and let's see what happens here. So it looks like it ran through and everything was successful. And here, if we take a look, this is the information that I just sent. And here, as it carried on, it did provide the bundle that I wanted. So let's take a look at the properties that it's feeding in here. So you can see that it's feeding the first name property and it's feeding the email. So let's go ahead and get into HubSpot and refresh here again. And we should see our first contact and there it is. So I can click here on preview and see that the contact exists. Now, of course, we don't have any other details on this contact just yet, and that'll be the next thing that we do. So for now, I am going to delete this since I don't want this contact to exist here. So let me just do that quickly. And let's go back to our scenario. And the next field that we want to take into consideration is the message field. And that'll require a different module since this module is able to map fields, but it doesn't have the engagement field that I want. So I'm gonna go ahead and add the third module here. And in this module, I will search for engagement and we want to create a new engagement. Now, if this is the first time that you're doing this, then every time you use a different type of module, you need to improve the permissions on the HubSpot side, or you can just allow everything, but I don't recommend you doing that. So in our case, let's go ahead and choose our account and click continue. And again, this is opening up another window here. So I will select my account and over here, it's going to tell me that this time it's providing more details here. I'll go ahead and hit connect app. So now that that is done, we can map the new fields that we wanna work with. So in this case, I don't wanna grab fields from the actual scenario. What I'm going to do is use the field date. You can either use a timestamp or now, and then you can wrap it with some functions if you want to set it in various ways. In this case, I'm just gonna add here now. And for the engagement type, I'm going to create a note. Now that we created a note, we can wire up the fields here again, and we can say that the field that we'd like to update is the note body. And in the value, we're just going to select from our form the message and drop that into here. And if I click OK and save my scenario and let's have it run once more and go back to our form, let me just refresh here. Let's go ahead and type in the information again. So I will go ahead and do that. And this is another test i try to make it different each time so we can recognize them and i'll hit send and it looks like that worked let me go back to my scenario and that flew right through so let's see that the last one indeed worked let's see what it threw into hubspot this is another test the value everything is there so if we go into here and refresh there it is i didn't even need to refresh and if i click on preview this time we should be able to see here a note somewhere waiting for us. Let's see if we can find it. And this is the preview of the card. So it might not be there. Let's go into the actual contact and let's see under activities. And it looks like it didn't update our note. So let's go back to our scenario and try to understand why this might be happening. So I will click on the last module that's supposed to take care of our note. And if you think about this for a minute, this module has no idea about any context from here or here just yet. It really is just mapping a note field, but it doesn't necessarily know where to attach this note to. So if we click on the add item under the associations this time, we'll have another dropdown that we can mess with. And under the object ID, we can search for the object ID that we received from previous scenarios. So if I close this for a sec, you'll see this is the first module and this is the second module. And if we go into this, we can see that we now have some fields that have populated that we can work with. So I'm searching here for object ID and there it is. So now we're kind of wiring up both modules so that they can communicate with one another. In association type ID, I'm going to say that this is a contact. So I'll go ahead and hit OK, save this, run once, go back to my form, refresh it again, and let's type information into here. And I'll go ahead and make this be a different email this time. This is a test since we didn't delete the previous contact and hit send. 
and go ahead into this. It looks like it just finished. And if we refresh here, oh, no, it should be actually a new contact. And there it is. So let's go into the new contact that we just saw. And now we have a note. So there is our note. This is a test. So it looks like everything worked. It added my name, it added my email, and it also added a note. And the possibilities of the things that we can do here are really endless. And that is exactly why I like to extract the logic and everything that's happening with my forms and bring it into a place like Make or Zapier and kind of work with the data that I have. So in this case, as a reminder, we didn't install any additional scripts or plugins. We're literally just using the Elementor form and we're throwing the data into here so that we can manipulate it and do whatever we want with it. So the first thing that you probably want to do is dive into our contact module and update this so that way we accommodate for possibly getting a first name, last name, or a full name. So what we want to do is let's get rid of this field for a minute and we can type into here some basic JavaScript logic. So I'll go ahead and hit get and then open parentheses. And I'm going to get a pop up over here that gives me some guidance as to what make is expecting back. So it's expecting an object and then I can do some stuff with that object. So in this case, I don't want to feed the object just yet because I want to work with that object. So I'm going to type into here again split and open parentheses, which will allow me to run a basic split function that's going to take either the first part, second part, third part, you name it. So in this case, into split, I do want to drop the name. And so what's going to happen is first the inner part is going to work and then the outer part. So I'm going to add here a colon. And after that, what it's expecting back is instructions on what to split. So in my case, I want it to split after a space. And so we need to add that. And the space, I always lose it and forget where it is. Here is the space. So it's going to look for a space in the name. And I will close that out. And the second thing is it needs to know what part to take when it finds a space in the name. So in my case, I just want it to take the first part. So I'll close my parentheses out and that's it. That's pretty much the logic that we need to work with. We'll test it in just a sec, but to go through this once more, what this is doing is it's taking the name that it's receiving, it's splitting it when it finds a space, and then it's only getting the first part of that name. So let's go ahead and hit OK. Let me save my scenario again and hit run once. And I'll go into here, refresh, and let's type into here this time my entire name. And let's do whatever email. And this is another test. And hit send. So this time it's with a bunch of eights. So let me go back into here. And this time we should only have the first name in the field. So let me refresh here. I'm pretty sure we ran the scenario. Let's see. There it is. It just took it a sec. So let me go into here. So we only have here the first name and the note that we provided and the long email with a bunch of eights. So the next step is to go back to our scenario here and go back to the contact. And this time we'll add a new field here, search for the property that we want to map here. And this time we'll type name again, but choose the last name. And for the last name, we want to take this and just copy it and paste it into here. And the only thing we need to do is change one to be number two. And we'll hit OK and I'll hit save and run this scenario once more. Go back to our form, refresh it, and I'll type into here my entire name and then into here. Let's do something else this time. This is a test. Hit send. And if we go back here, we should see this fly through and hopefully we won't have any errors. It can take it a second sometimes, especially when you're doing a bunch of tests like this back to back. And there it is. We saw it happening live. There's no issues. You would see here some red pop up with an error, but we're not seeing that. So that's great. Let me go back here. Let's go back to contacts. And this time we should be seeing and there it is. We're seeing now the full name, but let's also just ensure that the fields were wired up properly. So I'm going to edit this name and we see here that it was. So we have the first name and then the last name broken into two pieces. Now, as you can imagine, 
it might not be a smooth name like this and a person might come in and type in first name middle name last name or first name initial letter of the middle name and then the last name so you can add some more logic here to accommodate for all that but give an example of something that you could possibly do where with built-in form and integration from HubSpot, you may not necessarily be able to do it. You can add here a ton more logic, and that's the beauty of working with a tool like Zapier or Make. So for example, you can go into here and say you want to add a router, and you can add some more checks, and depending on what happens, you can either have it continue this direction or go to another direction. So for example, I will add my router. Let me unlink this and link this to the router and then from the router we'll continue here now that we have the router in our scenario what we can do is we can have multiple scenarios essentially running simultaneously so to give an example of this we won't set everything up i just want you to understand the logic let's just pretend that i want to send the user that just inquired with my business an email saying thank you for reaching out to us one of our representatives will get in touch with you shortly so we'll say that it's the send email module and in this case it automatically connected let me align this a little better so you can see here that what would happen now is as soon as an inquiry is received we're automatically gonna send the user an email saying thank you for inquiring with us and we're simultaneously injecting the field into the CRM. To give one more step up that you can do with this is we can add a filter right in the beginning and say that if the email that we're receiving from the initial module does not contain Gmail, then the scenario continues. Otherwise, it'll stop right there. So I'll say here, email does not equal Gmail. And let's go ahead and hit continue. And I don't wanna wire this up just yet. I just wanted to show you an example, so I'll delete it so I can save and test. So in this case, as you can imagine, what's gonna happen now is, only if we don't receive a Gmail will it actually inject the information into our CRM. So let me hit save, run once, and let's test this out. Again, we're pretending that we're only looking for business emails. So in this case, I will type into here something that's not Gmail. So I'll say my name at mybusiness.com and this is another test with business email. So it should technically carry on and we'll run it once more to see that so that just happened instantly, that's great. Let's go ahead and test this out and see that it's in here. And let me refresh here, and there it is, mybusiness.com, and HubSpot is actually showing us a logo here for that business. I didn't know that was a business. So the next thing that we wanna do is let's just test this once more and see that it won't bloat up our data with Gmail accounts. So let's go into here again, and I'll type in my name, and this time let's just do a Gmail account. This is a Gmail test. So this should technically stop right here. So I will go ahead and hit send. And it stopped right here. So you can see here zero because it didn't continue. Nothing here matched. And so it stopped the scenario right there. Now, if you really wanted to take this to the next level, what I would do is probably run this after the router. That way we can still send an email to the user that just inquired with us and simply let them know, hey, you reached out to us, we received your inquiry, but we don't work with private individuals and we do see that you used a gmail account if this was a mistake you can try to fill out your information again and use a business email so in order to do that you would have to have this filter after the router or just eliminate the router and do whatever it is that you want to do so hopefully you're starting to see some of the benefits and advantages that you'll get by going this route than having a plugin that's kind of pre-built for you and doesn't leave much room for flexibility and customizations so that'll do it for this video if you have any questions please drop them below and i'll do my best to answer them and if you'd like to support the channel the best way to do so is to give this video a thumbs up and subscribe thank you all for watching and happy building